Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, rejoice. Indeed, the Lord is near. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, with the Spirit. Spirit. and so, my dear brothers and sisters, we gather on this, the third Sunday of Advent, oftentimes referred to and called Gaudete Sunday. Rejoice. Rejoice that soon and very soon, Christ the Lord is born for us. The shortness of our human life reminds us too that soon and very soon we will be with God in the kingdom prepared for us. As we come together then as a family of believers, recognizing our sin, we turn to our God, asking Him to hear us and to grant us His forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst. A warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. The Lord your God will exalt over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 Sing and shout for joy, for 
the Lord is my strength, my song. He became my Savior. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Sing and shout for joy, for great in your A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. The crowds who were gathering to be baptized by John asked him, What should we do? In reply, John said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what should we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false allegations and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water. But one who is more powerful than I is coming, 
I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, John proclaimed the good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. The Advent season and the preparations for the coming of the Lord into our presence at Christmas is a time in which we can become somewhat overly distracted by all of the things that need to be done. Advent, as we know, is, is an incredibly busy time. If we were to look at appointment books or we were to look at the list of things to do, the month of December is always filled with so many. We have to be places, we have to do things. We double book ourselves or find ourselves in situations where we have multiple things to, to attend. We try to find the time to, to spiritually connect with the season. And our readings today draw us into that sense of connecting at a level that we put aside the activities, and that we enter into the season with an emotional response. You see, our, our first reading today is so powerful. The prophet Zephaniah says, Sing aloud, O daughter Zion, and shout for joy, O Israel. Rejoice with all your heart, for the Lord your God is in your midst. Have you ever considered how many times a Jewish person went into prayer hoping that the Messiah would come. And do you ever consider how these prophets that were given this message by God, even with the great faith that they, that they had, would not in their prayer reach out to God and say, Lord, please let this be right? We come to a time in our Advent preparations that the world is becoming the darkest. And I don't say that by the activities that are going on. It is by nature. The days are becoming the shortest of the year. And we are called in a very spiritual sense to be able to enter into that darkness. And by that darkness, I don't mean the bad places. But that darkness of our longing to emotionally reach into that, that place within us to see what it is that today I really long for. Today I, I desire. What is my hope? And to be honest about it. With the same passion that they spoke at this time, saying God is near. We stand as children who have seen the promise fulfilled. But I ask the question of myself many times. Would I have been as faithful if I did not 
possess the promise. Would I have remained as steadfast, longing for the coming of the Messiah, when hearing the words of Zephaniah and Jeremiah and, of course, the great Isaiah, would I have believed that God was going to to deliver the promise? How many of my ancestors would have died not seeing the promise? And it asks of us the question today, what is it that I hope for? What is it that I am longing for? When I go to that that very, very private place inside, what is it that my soul is longing for? We can become wrapped up in the events, in the things, failing to recognize that what Advent is, is also a season of dreams. It is a, it is a season by which we unite ourselves with God in such an intimate way that God knows exactly what it is that I need but what I hope for. When we look at Christmas and we look at our Advent preparations, what do we hope for? You know, there's all kinds of people in this city and throughout our country that right now are hoping, hoping they're going to find a turkey for the, for the big feast on Christmas Day. There's people that are hoping that their children might come home. There are people that are hoping and longing for a Christmas gathering that is, that is not filled with animosity. Parents that are hoping this might be the celebration in which their children all get along. Hoping. Such an important thing for us. Because it is there that we have this union with God. It's that I take myself out of the hustle and the bustle and all of the busyness and the activity to speak to God with an authentic heart. You know, I found myself <clears throat> last week thinking of this. That part of me is so overwhelmed with joy. Because this Christmas, we're not going to be governed by 30 people that can attend Mass. Do you know how much my heart just, it just wants to burst? Because we're not going to have to stand at the door and say, the inn is full. That on this great feast of God incarnate, born as one of us, our doors will be open to welcome the friend and the family member, to welcome the searcher and the stranger, to welcome even the lost. What do I hope for? You see, when Zephaniah speaks about great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel, it's not a presence that is not tangible. For great in our midst is the Holy One of Israel. It is the God that takes and makes His home within us. When I was growing up, there was a a Christmas hymn. And one of the lines in it said, Jesus the Christ, be born in us all. Be born in us. Take up your residence. And it is in that quiet place, that darkened space, 
where I am most honest with my God that the Holy One sits with me. And our preparation for all of the celebration is one in that we allow that, that God to come into us. You know, there are so many wonderful things about what we are getting ready to, to celebrate. First and foremost, I want to go back, taking just one line from last week. And it said this, The word of God came to John the Baptist in the wilderness. In the chaos. The word of God came to John in the chaos. Sometimes we think, well, the word of God should come when everything is calm, everything is, is just perfect. It didn't. It came in the wilderness. It came in an area that was a dangerous place. The first ones to, to be called to go and witness the birth of Jesus, they were shepherds. They were lowly people. There was nothing utterly significant about them. They had nothing to give in terms of a gift. Their only gift was their presence. We welcome this God into our, into our homes, into our very being. A God who, who promised, the first person promised, guaranteed paradise, was a repentant thief on the cross. Goes against what our, our very idea of what it should be. And the first apostle of the resurrection of Jesus Christ was a woman who the scripture says was possessed by seven spirits. None of it, which is the ideal. And recognizing that is why we need to take that time to let this loving God into my own chaos, which maybe isn't the ideal. That maybe looks to what it is, even if my hopes and my dreams and my longing are a little bit fabricated, although a little bit beyond what many would say God can do. I drive some people crazy because I pray for world peace. They will say it's futile. You know, in the history of the world, 6,000 years, 8% of the time of the world's history the world has been at peace. That means 92% of the time the world is at war. Maybe that is the reason I hope for peace. When we let God into that special place, it is then that God takes up his residence with us. You see, here are the words that, that lead us to the, to the sense of rejoicing Sunday. The prophet says, do not fear. The Lord your God is in your midst. He is a warrior. He will rejoice over you. He will exult with gladness. Paul says, the Lord is near. Do not worry about anything. What this season of Advent draws us into is allowing that Lord who is ever near to be within. You see, when we go to, to witness the manger scene and we see the child there, 
we are moved. But more than anything is that we are drawn into this mission to take that child to the world. St. Paul says, let your gentleness be known to everyone. Even in all of the activity, it is to, to allow that gentle soul to make room for the, our Lord, but to encourage others to allow the Lord in. What do we hope for? <clears throat> what do we long for? What do we wish for? When I let my God in, all is fulfilled. For the Lord then is at hand. Great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. That is the God who, who I allow in. It is the God who, who I give permission to not only guard my life, but to guide my days. It is the one who becomes the confidant. And when I recognize that my God is ever so near, I can embrace even more fully the child that he gives to me. I can take the child with me. My greatest hope for everybody, and myself included, is to be more like Jesus. To be more like that Holy One. The promised Messiah who they waited for and trusted, recognizing that many lost faith, gave up on the prophets, they said God didn't hear them. God didn't listen. God wasn't faithful. And yet here we stand as brothers and sisters of such a, a tremendous promise. A child that comes to us at Bethlehem. And a God who today desires only that we let him in. You see, what is so beautiful about this first reading is this. It is Gaudete Sunday. Rejoice. We say rejoice and exalt with all your heart. But listen to this. He will exalt over you. It's not just about us rejoicing and exalting because God is great. It's about God who will rejoice over us with gladness. He will renew us by his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. If that is my God, come, come, Emmanuel. Come. I give you my heart. I give you my being. Bring all of your grace into my heart that I might truly see in your Son the Holy One of Israel. The one who never abandons. The one who walks with us always. The one who shows to us the face of the all-loving Father. Gaudete. Rejoice, people of God, as today God exalts over you. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the rest. Amen. Allowing the goodness of this Holy One of Israel into our midst, we now have the courage to place in his hands our words. Come, Emmanuel, into the hearts of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Mark, our Bishop, and all ministers in the Church, that they forever herald the joy of the good news of the Gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Come, Emmanuel, and find your home with the faithful. Inspire them to give of themselves in witness to the beauty of your message. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Come, Emmanuel, and bring your guidance to all world leaders. Help them to work toward eradicating poverty, increasing educational opportunities, and working toward justice for all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Come, Emmanuel, with your ever-present gift of peace. Fill our homes and families, our communities and our world, with understanding and love for one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Come, Emmanuel, with healing. Grant restoration of good health to those who suffer and patience and courage to all caregivers and health care professionals. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Come, Emmanuel, and draw all to your light. Be present to those who prepare for their er earthly death and give the promise of salvation to those who have died trusting in you. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, draw near to us as we continue to journey on this pilgrim way to encounter you in Bethlehem. Grant to us open hearts, that we might prepare a place for you, that you might bid to be with us, to draw near to us, and to listen to us. Grant to us all that we ask, for we do so in the name of Jesus, your Son and our Lord, who lives with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. that my sacrifice of yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hearts, for the grace and glory of his name, 
May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in the sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mary longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. chalice of salvation. Giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, with Mark, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Apostles, with St. John the Baptist, and St. Patrick, and all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may never be co heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and form by the light of Jesus, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day of our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us in our days. That by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and Lord Jesus Christ, who sent your apostles, peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your people. And gracious grant to her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Jesus,
Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults, prepare us for the coming feast through Christ our Lord. Amen. As mentioned last week, we are reaching out to our community through Christmas hampers for needy families. This is the final week that we will be collecting food for those hampers. So if you are watching this and here in the city of Saskatoon or close by, if you desire to join with us in bringing non-perishable food that can be shared with those in need, we would greatly appreciate that. We also want to thank those who have made financial contributions to our Hamper Project. It is always greatly appreciated and we will continue to accept your gifts of financial donations that we can help make brighter, Christmas brighter for many of our local families. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now go in the peace of Christ. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Jesus, come, come, Lord Jesus.